Well, the Wizards try, but it was not enough as the Sixers pull away and they complete the win. Wire to wire, pretty much, for them as we welcome you here to Sixers Post Game Live, brought to you by Auto Insurance. Amy Fiddle, Jim Lanham, and Mark Jackson. And guys, this one was a, a clinic put on by a couple of players. We're going to talk about everybody. The bench played well, certainly in the second half. We know what Tyrese Maxey did. We're going to hear from him. But James Harden, wow, 17 assists. That ties a career high for him. It's also the most by anybody in the NBA this season so far. Mark, I mean, what did you see from him? I just seen James Harden just doing what he does. He, he scores, he shoots, he facilitates at such an elite level that it, 17 assists, you're like, that's his career high. Like, we was like, no, it got to be like mm -hmm. 25 or 30. We was like dumbfounded. Like, I would expect more from him because he's such a lead at it. Lead at it. So how do you defend someone that can shoot past and, and do so, at such an incredible level? It's very difficult. Yeah, the thing is you can't when you look at his Boom. 17 assists and 23 points. But, Jim, to Mark's point, he does make it look easy. You almost look down and think, Wow, just 17 because his passing is elite. Yeah, uh, I'll tell you what he's tremendous at, Aim. He passes the ball off the dribble. And as in so doing, I mean, he directs bounce passes through like creases or cracks, if you will, that really almost aren't there sometimes for me. His vision is tremendous, and his ability to execute is phenomenal. Yeah, it was a fun one to watch. He had eight assists at the half, so he more than doubled that in the second half. And they went on that furious run to end the third. Obviously, it helped build that lead because the Wizards did come back a bit. What did you see during that 18-2 run? I just seen this team come together. They had some good stops when they count. They, they did good on the defensive end with scrambling out there off of mismatches. But also, I thought, guys just got hot. Maxie was able yeah. to get in the lane. James was able to facilitate. Other guys, uh, De'Anthony Milton got going. Mm -hmm. this, all five starters in double figures. I just think during that run, everybody contributed on both ends of the floor. You mentioned him, Tyrese Maxey. He had 28. Let's go back down to D.C. and check in with him as he's joined by Kate Nala. Well, happy Halloween, Tyrese. Uh, all in, I didn't want any candy. We just wanted a dub. So thank you for delivering that to us tonight. You're welcome, Miss uh, Kate. You're uh, welcome. You got things going in the in the second quarter. What changed for you? James took over offensively in the first. What changed in the second? Uh, I mean, you know, when a guy has a rolling like James Hard, you got to kind of got to take a back seat, let him cook. And then, you know, when they take him out, no big fella tonight. So I tried to be as aggressive as I could and uh, create for my teammates and create for myself. One of the young, hard, toughest things for a young guy is to be consistent. How are you finding a way to be consistent night in? the night out uh, honestly you know my really I want to credit my teammates for the way we play defense and the way that we move the ball together and then just the credit to the work you know every time I say every time somebody asks me about the work I always say uh, everything that you do uh, when no one's watching it always comes to light when you you know perform in front of thousands let's talk about a couple of your newer teammates the Anthony Melton had a six or high 16 points tonight balling. PJ had a had a season high 13 points tonight so talk about those guys joining the crew they're balling man they're balling man Melton has fine uh, find his niche. Uh, PJ, you know, he's been around for 35 years, so you know, he's been in the league for a long time, so he knows what he's going to do. And he's played with James before, so he knows exactly what uh, you know the space is like and everything that he needs to do to play with him. But uh, Mel is huge, man. They call him Mr. Do Something for a reason, and that's what he does. He, he asks him to guard Bradley Bill. We ask him to make open threes. We ask him to roll. We ask him to pop. We ask him to do so many different things, uh, you know, in the basketball court, and that's what he does. Tell me a little bit about the other guys. No Joel. How important were Montrez yeah, and so Tobias? Good, Mr. Do something. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Do something. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! How important was it for the other guys to step in in place of Joel tonight? No, my trust was huge. Uh, Paul Reed got in, and made an impact uh, really fast, and uh, you know, every time the big fella has to go out, we have to play collectively. Uh, you know, he's our leader, he's our MVP. I, I said it all the time, but uh, when he goes out, we have to uh, come as one unit and, and try to still get the W. Three in a row, Tyrese. Let's Excellent go back work. to Philly, baby. Let's go back to Philly. Let's Here we go. go. Home. Three in a row, and you heard him talking about. Anthony Melton, Mr. Do Something. I love that nickname. He got that in Memphis, and now you're seeing why he has it. Let's check back in with Kate Scott and Ala Abdenabi. Miss Kate is what we like to call her sometimes. <laughs> Happy Halloween, Miss Kate and Ala. I love, I love Happy that. Happy Halloween, team. Happy Halloween. What, what a game. I mean, this one was in doubt when you're thinking about it. It was tie game. They were clawing in the first half. It was back and forth, and then they went on that huge run in the third quarter, 18-2, to two, to really kind of put this one away. I know the Wizards tried to come back in the fourth, but so many people stepped mm -hmm. up. You heard from Tyrese there saying they know when they don't have Joel Embiid, their MVP, they all need to kind of up their game a little bit. And I feel like, Kate, you saw that tonight. It was incredible, Amy, and you heard Tyrese talk about it, the fact that James took the baton early, right? He knew 
No, Joel, so I'm going to get mine. 15 points, six assists in the first quarter, and then like a great Hall of Fame point guard does, he started getting everyone else involved. Didn't really score at all in the second quarter. Scored when he needed to in the third and fourth, Allah, but I was just really impressed by the fact that, as Amy mentioned, things were really close. It was getting a little hairy there in the third quarter, and then Harden and company just put their foot back on the gas and got this win. Yeah, great opportunities in front of them. They made the most of them. Yeah, guys, uh, I thought that the Sixers defense was as active as we've seen it. They had 14 steals in this game, and I think that led to a lot of quick offense going in the other direction. Well, they did. Listen, they made the most of what the opportunities were there as far as I thought they were active. I thought they changed ends real good. I thought they were aggressive, and I thought ultimately they paid off. And I think it's been a point of emphasis, uh, as we all know, after they started the year one and four, nobody was happy. <laughs> Fans weren't happy. Broadcasters mm -hmm. weren't happy. The guys were, as they always are, more upset than everybody else. So they made a change, game two in Toronto, and it seems like they're just getting more and more comfortable with each other. And as a result, the communication has taken a step in the right direction. And what do you know, Coach? The defense has gotten better, too. Absolutely, Kay and Ala. We, we discussed the, 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 the tremendous game that Maxi had, Harden had. 22 points from the bench. A lot of people got in and contributed. Can we talk about maybe this team, the, the rotation guys starting to find their way and the importance of them being consistent and giving them something from that aspect? Well, you want to know what you're putting out there when you're a coach, right? You want to know if, if a guy is a defender, he's going to go out there and defend. So I think right now that consistency is giving Doc more confidence, and that's something that will bode well, I think, moving forward. And, Mark, you know this. I, I don't think <laughs> none of us have patience anymore as sports fans, right? Mm -hmm. We see these guys like Trez, who had a great game tonight, like D. Melt and like P.J., who we mentioned. Daniel House is slowly but surely finding his footing as well. But we see all these guys play for other teams, and we just think, well, game one here, they're going to be – exactly as they are for the Sixers. It takes time. They're, they're getting to know the other guys. They're getting to know how they talk, when they talk, where they like to be on the floor, where they like to catch the ball on the pass. They're learning all of these things. Mark, as you know, coach, as you know. So it, it seems as if they're just starting to figure it out. And now three in a row on the road. And we can't wait to get back to y'all in Philly. It's because we're all very relaxed here in Philadelphia. We're all relaxed <laughs> now. We've relaxed after there's, that. There's nothing before. big going on in Philly, no, right? No, very, very no World zen, Series, very no relaxed. MLS Cup just, final. There's nothing going the on. Just Sixers world. <laughs> All right, guys, we'll see you here <laughs> on Wednesday as they face the same wizard squad, but here on our turf. Thanks so much, Kate and Ella. We appreciate you. Safe travels. Happy Halloween, team. Happy Halloween. Thank you. All right, let's check out our Colonial Nissan Game Changer. And it was Mr. James Harden, Jimmy, as we sometimes like to call him, even though he does not like it. But this guy did everything. We mentioned it. Eight assists at the half, 15 points at that point. 5 of 11 shooting to finish Jim with what he did. 17 assists and then 23 points. He was all, and he had, I think, seven rebounds too, but he really was all over the place, especially in that third and early fourth when they really needed him to step up. Yeah, uh, he was a huge factor, I thought, in that third period. And they scored 34 points in the third period to the Sixers. They shot 14 for 17. And to me, a lot of that was with Harden by Rex and mm -hmm. either scoring himself or putting somebody else in a position to score. I mean, we know how he's going to go is usually how this team is going to go. He had been struggling a little bit shooting, but he had been facilitating more. Tonight was a night where he was able to do both, Mark. How? Because that's what kind of player he is. I think he's starting to get comfortable, starting to round himself in his shape. And as far as basketball mm -hmm. shape, I think his body looks phenomenal. But I think he's starting to click with his teammates and know what to expect and what he's going to be. And when you're a veteran player that has a ball in your hand so much, that's so important for you. And you see him there. He was working a little bit with uh, DeAnthony Melton. These are guys that, yes, last year he played some games, 21 regular season, we know, in the postseason with most of the Sixers. But DeAnthony Melton and, and Daniel House and Montrez Harrell, these are guys that he has not played with uh, certainly any time. So how surprised are you that he was able to continue that kind of same momentum with different people. I think it's important when you know your players and respectfully to James and the rotation guys like these guys got to adapt to James know what he wants them at and be, be at that place and be, know what they're doing they receive the ball because it's a chain reaction. Once he initiates something off a pass or a shot, everyone else got to fill in a role, and that's how it works all better together. One thing we talked about pregame, Jim, was that they had in their last game 29 assists to the 38 field goals. That ratio you really liked. I'm going to give you another ratio. Field goals by area, 28 in the paint, 6 in the mid-range, 12 from 3. So much hmm. more close inside, even without Joel Embiid. Maybe speaks to pace, maybe it speaks to straight drives. 
Is that the kind of ratio you'd like to see as far as how the shots broke up? Yeah, that's uh, obviously very good. Uh, and I would say you're right. Uh, aim pace and penetration. You know, when they got up, it's easier to penetrate in the open floor before the defense is set. But I thought they made a concentrated effort to drop their head and penetrate that ball. And when you do that, you really get the defense on their heels. I mean, that's something we've seen maybe the last couple of games, but that's a pretty good ratio. This team, yeah. when they started one and four, you're seeing a lot more mid-range and out, three-pointers and, and things like that. 28 shots inside the paint made field goals. That's a good number. But you said that's without your Wall and B, right? Exactly. That's without the biggest, yeah. baddest man in the Think NBA. It. And they're getting that many shots in the paint. That's telling you that this team is starting to find a footing. People say, oh, they don't look good, they don't look... And I tell you, they're a veteran team. They need time to work themselves in the game shape, in the game rhythm. They're not playing pickup for six hours a day and all season like a lot of these young guys. So with that being said, they're starting to find their rhythm. They're starting to attack. They got a lot of dogs there. One thing mm -hmm. dogs like is to be in the mud getting dirty. And that means getting around that basket. Back with Yingling Presents Lager Up. And you called Kristaps Porzingis a glorified two-guard. Well, he went against the Sixers two-guard, Mark Jackson, and it did not go well for him. <laughs> it really didn't. This guy, Maxi, man, his ability to use his off-hand and off-leg to score and just go right at you. Look, Porzingis is a legit 7'3". Max is like 5'1". <laughs> and watch how he just go right through Porzingis' chest like he's not even there. That's a, first of all, that's a player that you tell spent a lot of time his whole life mm -hmm. practicing, using a rim like this to finish and to go over with taller guys. Do you think he practices going off like one foot and off balance? Because, Jim, I've never seen anybody do that Has as well. To. Has right? to. Yeah, and I would ask Mark, uh, is that disarming uh, to a big guy, Mark, when the guy goes off the other foot? Like, no, you're expecting the second foot to land, and before it does, the ball's in They're the air. Gone. Yes. Yeah. Shot block is about timing. I don't care how high you jump, you have to have proper timing. And when a guy's coming at you off the opposite foot, opposite hand, or same foot, same hand, it throws your timing off, or he's in his move, and instead of putting the other hand on the ball, able to use one hand and it go up, it throws your timing off, which are always a second late or a second too soon to block the shot. Especially if the guy's a foot shorter than you. Exactly. Porzingis might miss the bus. His timing was so... Yeah, he was. So <laughs> off. So off. He's still wondering where everything went wrong. He has no idea. He's actually probably still playing the game. <laughs> Let's check in with Doc Rivers now after his team's win. <laughs> Ball movement again, you know, uh, our space. I thought we played in spurts with pace, but for the most part, we kept the pace. Um, you know, we, we worked today about, you know, trapping James, trapping um, Tyrese, and I thought, I thought DeAnthony Melton, just being the quarterback in the middle of the floor, you know, we just kept telling whoever gets trapped, go to the middle, play that, that game there. I thought we did a great job there. And then I thought the uh, end of the third, fourth quarter was huge with that Tyrese group on the floor. Um, I don't even know who's out there. George was part of it. Uh, Trez. I thought that was a huge stretch for us. You know, that got us a big lead, stretched the game open for us. Um, and then just look at the scoring in the first unit. Everyone touched the ball. That, that's how we have to play. Yeah, I was going to ask about the run <clears throat> third and fourth, especially with those those bench guys. Uh, yeah. how, how much of a lift does the back provide? Huge. Provide? You know, we keep it simple. Um, ran two sets, you know, and variations of the same set. Um, you, you knew now that James are off the floor, they're going to have a major focus on Tyrese. Uh, they did. Uh, he made the right plays. And, you know, we talked after the game. I, I thought two of the biggest plays, team-building plays, um, was Tyrese was on fire. And we threw the ball to him on the elbow. He's open, and he throws it to uh, Tuck, who misses. Then we come back, Tyrese is still on fire. We throw it to him wide open. Yeah, he throws the next pass to Tobias, makes a three. Those are team building plays. Um, that was good for him. For a young guy um, to have that wherewithal to understand the moment like that is, is rare. Was it conscious, a conscious effort to have, like when James was out there, it just seems like you know, he was in control, he distributed the run, yeah. he scored. And then when he would go to the bench, Tyrese did it. Yeah, yeah, we, we, yeah, that was exactly what we wanted to do. Okay. Yeah, um, you know they're so athletic and long that they trap a lot. Uh, knowing that, we felt like let's try to take advantage of it when we could, and if we couldn't, let's use speed, and that's what Tyrese came in. 
I guess to go off of that, I mean, I kind of asked you this question before the game, but are, are you guys learning what to do when Joel's not on the floor? Like, these are the yeah, ways but, that but we... we have better players, too. We have more sure. players, you know, and, and that helps. You know, it, it really does. We have more guys that can play with the ball. Um, you know, James can play with it, obviously, and Tyrese can as well. Uh, Tuck is so smart. Uh, Tobias can play with the ball. And DeAnthony can play with the ball. So we just have more guys, more decision makers, and it makes us a smarter basketball team. Doc, just that third quarter in general, after being tied at halftime, yeah. how much did that just set the tone for the rest of the game? huge. Third quarters are huge. They always have been. Uh, when you can come out and stretch a game in the third quarter, uh, it, it, changes, it changes the dynamic of the game. Uh, I would love us to be that type of team. You obviously, we've mentioned or talked about D'Anthony a lot the last couple of games. Just what do you feel like has maybe clicked for him over the last just, four just, or five you games? Just, you know, so? honestly, the two things is just playing with us more, number one. Number two is touching the ball. Like, you know, the first two games, you like, he never really touched the ball a lot. Uh, now we're sharing the ball more as a team, and he feels more involved. Um, he's such a disruptor defensively. Um, you know, and again, I keep saying I knew he was good. I didn't know he was this good. Defensively, he, he's, his hands are they're just incredible. Doc, when you look at the trip holistically to win three games in four days after the way that it started, yeah. what have you learned about the team or, or what clicked, I guess? That we just have resolve. And, and again, we're the team that we wouldn't, we don't panic. We, we understand we're going to be good. Uh, we still understand we got work to do. Like, we're nowhere near where we're going to be. Not close. Um, but, you know, one of the things we talked about, we still got to win the games where we're trying to figure it out. Um, and, and we did that the last three games. It's one of the things you want to clean up is, I guess, when you get these leads, tighten it up a little bit. Yeah, you know, but teams are going to make a run. You know, you know that. Um, we felt like, especially, they played last night, so we thought we were really talking about the third quarter. Because what teams try to do, if they can get the game to halftime and it's tied, they come out and try to play with energy, and we felt like we needed to play with even more energy starting the game, so that helped. But, yeah, just our late game execution. It was good, um, but it wasn't great. Just in terms of a couple more guys. not having stagnant offense, it seems like when P.J. is involved, that generally doesn't happen. Uh, is that a thought in your mind to get him more involved when things might become a little stationary? Yeah, well, oh, we put him at the five. I think that's one of the things we'll do, you know. Um, you know, taking them out, bringing them back in, um, you know, it's something we talk about doing a lot. You know, the problem is we keep getting guys injured, or and so it's hard to do it. But uh, we're starting to see slowly what our rotation can be. And with Tyrese, uh, you know, his, his pace is obviously a weapon, and changing the pace. It looks like he's also shifting defenders and more aware of the help defenders. Yes, he's growing. Yeah. He really is. You can see it. Um, you know, first half, I thought he made some, some sloppy plays, you know, tried to force it. You know, so much is coming at him. You think about it, the last time we went small ball, he had 40-whatever points. So he's thinking, OK, this is going to be another one of those nights. And then first half, he was struggling. I, actually, in the first quarter, really struggling. And then he kind of gathered himself and figured out how they were going to play him uh, and took advantage of it. Thank All right, you. guys. Thank you. Talking a little maxi there at the end, you heard from Doc Rivers saying, listen, you know, the last time we went small ball, he had 40 plus. That was that Raptors game. We saw him go crazy at 28 tonight. But I have this interesting thing. He had five regular season games prior to the season where he had 20 field goals, five total prior to the season. Now he's had three where he's had 20 or more field goal attempts. Mark, do you like this evolution of him becoming that kind of volume shooter? Listen, you cannot keep the lid on something spectacular for too long. And this young man is so hungry, he's so dedicated and so in love with the game. You can't keep a lid on his ceiling for too long. And now the world will witness how his ceiling appears. Is this evolution of him shooting that many times, Jim, something that, you know, that the Sixers can really depend on? They can use that? This is the evolution of their team? Oh, you can get depend on it, Aim. I mean, right from the very beginning, I mean, uh, he wasn't, I'd say, when mm -hmm. he was coming off the bench as a rookie.
he wasn't getting huge minutes. So obviously that puts a cap on your numbers. But I'll tell you what he could do. He drove by anybody who was in front of him from the first moment he walked on the court. And he was had a knack of getting shots. He didn't always look for shots. But if he wanted to get a shot and create one for himself, he could. But the big transformation for me from year one to year two, and now we're in year three, his three-point mm. shooting, I mean, spectacular. And I choose the words advisedly. That's how you describe the improvement from year one to year two. You simply don't see it. You went from 30 to 43%. You do not see that. But that's what happens when you get that kind of playing time and you work as hard as he clearly does on his game.